Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we are talking about a team certified conference phone from Yaling, the CP965. In this video, we're gonna unbox the conference phone, take a look at all the included components, do a device overview, talking about its features and capabilities. Then we'll walk through actually setting it up, getting signed into Microsoft Teams, and demoing how to use the phone in an actual conference room scenario. Before we get into the content, just a couple quick reminders. If you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, there's a really handy subscribe button below. Hit that and then turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on all the other awesome content that I'll come out with in the future. And then if you like the video, even if you don't like it, hit the like button below. Really appreciate that. Share it all over your social media accounts. Spread the word, right? Sharing is caring after all. So that's it. That's all the reminders I've got for you with that. Let's jump into the content. All right, let's crack the lid on the top of this thing. Right up top, we've got our user guide, this quick start guide right here. We'll set that off to the side. Got a little bit of foam padding up top to protect the contents. Plenty of styrofoam inside to keep everything in place and not let it get jostled during transportation. But as we pull the CP965 out of the box, we can see it's got this wedge of styrofoam protection up top and it is wrapped in plastic to protect the surface of the device. Pulling the CP965 out of its plastic, we can see what it looks like right at the very top here. We'll pull this protective film from the front, and we are ready to set this thing up in just a few moments. We'll remove this larger middle layer of styrofoam, and then finally inside, we've got our network cable. This is a lengthier seven and a half meter network cable, uh, giving us PoE to the device. It does not have a we're not using a separate power supply for the device. We are powering it over ethernet. And finally, we've got a screwdriver and a couple screws in here included as well. And with the contents all laid out here, again, we've got that small little screwdriver for getting into the device. We've got the PoE cable right here, our ethernet cable for PoE, I should say, and then the CP965 itself. I should mention that as this is what ships with the solution at a base, there is an optional PoE adapter kit Optionally, you can get a pair of decked microphones to go as a satellite microphones to the solution. There is also an optional Bluetooth microphone with charger that you can get as well. Taking a closer look at the top of our device, we've obviously got our mics and speaker phone built in right up top. You've got two mute buttons at these two legs, we'll call them right here. Right down at the bottom, we've got our volume down and volume up, as well as a home button. And then of course, this is a touch interface so that when it's powered on, we will navigate the Microsoft Teams interface with the touch interface, hanging up, answering calls, interacting with the calls. Coming around to the bottom of the device, we've got rubber grips at the three sides, keeping the device firmly in place at the table. We've also got a security slot right here and a USB-A port right there. Finally, our cables that will connect the device, the Ethernet cable, as well as the optional USB-C cable will connect through here. We need that included screwdriver to get it open. And I lied, you don't need the included screwdriver to get it open, but you will need it with that included screw to secure it in place once your cables are in there. Taking a look at the inside, you'll see we've got that Ethernet port and that USB-C port and you will run those cables out here. USB-C is only if you're attaching a USB-C device to this. Otherwise, we'll just have that single ethernet cable delivering uh, internet connectivity as well as power. All right, to get the CP965 online, we need to lift the, uh, the cover at the bottom of the device, uh, but we take a PoE cable, ethernet cable, and we'll plug it into the internet slot. You can see the USB-C is for PC. And once it is clicked in, we're going to run that cable through the slot right there. If you have a PC plugged in, you'll run it through that slot there. And we'll bring this back down and slide it into place. Now to lock that in place, you will get that screwdriver and inclu included, included screw and screw this in right at that point. We can now plug this into uh, a PoE port and fire it up. Uh, one note. Yaylink does include in their documentation that you should use a Yaylink PoE converter, not any other brand, uh, so that you don't cause damage to the appliance. Uh, so just take that note for what it's worth. Uh, it does list the PoE uh, injector as being optional, but clearly you will 
want that or need that to uh, to power this on. Now, as we plug in the CP965, it powers on. We'll get our initializing screen here, and we'll walk through getting set up with uh, optionally Wi-Fi if we don't have uh, internet coming through the ethernet cable, and then getting signed into Microsoft Teams. Taking a glance up at our mute buttons in the back during initialization, they glow red. Now the first screen we're presented with after it powers on is our language setting. I'm gonna keep it on English United States. That matches me and my locale. Hit that little checkbox in the upper corner. Got to select our time zone. Uh, let's see, we'll go to our time zone. This is the wrong direction, or maybe it was the right direction. Pretty responsive, as you can see. I just kind of fling, and it goes in the direction I want, depending on what, how much I've touched it, or uh, whether I've flung my finger or not. It'll go a little faster or slower. Our central time zone here for U.S. and Canada, actually. Okay, we'll say yes. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got our team sign-on screen. You can obviously uh, go to the Microsoft.com device login to sign in remotely, or we can sign in on the device itself. Before I get signed in, however, I mentioned that you can optionally connect to Wi-Fi if you're not getting an Ethernet or a, an internet signal through your PoE. Got power but I don't actually have internet coming through this cable. So we'll go and click on the settings tab right up here in the corner. And uh, we got a few different things up here, cloud, provision device. Uh, it's an Android device, right? So it can be provisioned remotely in the portal. Uh, report an issue or device settings. So we're gonna say device settings here. And we got a number of things. We can change our language, time and date, which we already set. Uh, coming into the display, you've got backlight active level, uh, backlight time. If you want this to like dim out after a period of time, your screensaver, um, we're gonna leave all that alone, but that's stuff to do with your display. Uh, Bluetooth, if you want to enable or disable Bluetooth, I don't need it for, my, for this video, but we can change the Bluetooth name and turn it on and control your open discover option. Then we've got Wi-Fi, which we'll set in just one second. Your analog headset mode, uh, not going to use that, but it's an option. Accessibility, reboot the device, about, and upgrade. So actually, we're going to go ahead and do Wi-Fi, and then after we're connected, we'll check for an upgrade. We'll turn on Wi-Fi, and then we'll join the network. Once we're connected with Wi-Fi, which I just did, we'll click on that upgrade button down here. We'll say check for upgrades. We see that we are already at the latest version, so all good there. We say okay, we'll come back out. We already talked about all these other settings. Uh, admin only, if we go in here and enter the admin only password, we get some of our admin control settings. But now that we've reviewed most of these uh, user facing settings here, we'll go ahead and go back on the device settings. We'll sign in on the device and I'm gonna sign in with my personal account rather than a room account for this video. All right, we're signed in. We tell our told we're good to go. We say, got it. And that'll bring us to our main Teams interface here. Loads up my picture, the time, the date, puts our calling options up here. We've got calls, people, calendar, voicemail. Down at the bottom, we've got our volume up or our volume down. If I click my user account up top, I can set my status here, set a status message, connect a device if we wanted to connect a device that way. We've got our hot desking settings. What's new will tell us any new features that are present. And then if we go to settings, this is where we get uh, a whole bunch of things about our experience on the phone. We've got the general appearance. We've got manage delegates. If we go to appearance, we can turn this dark mode if we want, flip it into dark really quick. It'll say restart. And after restarting, we've now placed the CP965 in dark mode. And manage delegates, if I had delegates or I needed to manage any, this is where you would do that. I've got my profile that I can go to, uh, calling, if we click on calling. This gives us settings for our call, the way we wanna handle our ringtones for our calls, our forwarded calls, delegated calls, um, call views for speed dial over here, block calls with no caller ID, we can do that if we want to. And then we can turn on end-to-end -end encrypted calls if uh, we need it for that for security purposes. On our meetings, 
We can show meeting names. We can turn that on or off. It's on by default. We've got a home screen that's turned on. Notifications are turned on. We can report an issue. We can go to about to get our versions and all that good stuff. You can sign out if you need to sign into the device with a different account. And then finally, we've got device settings down here. And device settings, we already went over these settings earlier before signing into Teams. Nothing new there. All right, let's go fire up a, uh, a, an ad hoc meeting here. Uh, we're going to have a new meeting. We can mute or now our mic is on. We'll turn the mic off. And then, of course, for our device, we can have speaker or audio off. We'll keep it on the speaker there. And uh, under our join option, we can join with audio off, but we're just going to join with uh, the regular settings. We can change the name of the meeting here as well if we want to. Once we've joined the meeting, we can see that we can add participants here. Um, we go up to our participants tab up top. Clicking on the participants tab up top, we can go here and add people here as well. Tap to return to our meeting. Now we've got our meeting controls at the bottom. Now we are muted right now, but if you look up here, you'll see, sure enough, we are muted. The mute buttons are red. If I tap the mute button, they turn green. We have unmuted ourselves, and back down here we can see we are unmuted again. But now, down here, if I tap the mute button, we are once again muted back here. So obviously you have correlation between the two mute buttons. We've also got our speaker here. We can turn our audio off, but we're going to leave it on speaker. Clicking on our three dots, we can start recording. We can react in the meeting as well. We can lock the meeting turn on live captions, and of course, access the dial pad. If we're properly licensed, we can dial out from this meeting. And finally, when we're all done with our call, we will just hit the hang up button. Okay, to manage the A-Link CP965 from the Teams Admin Center, you can see we've come to the Teams Devices section in the Teams Admin Center, and we've gone down to phones. Now in phones, I am on user phones because I signed in to the 965, which we see highlighted right here. I've got it highlighted. I signed into that with my personal account. So it shows up under here. It's still a phone per the system, but it is a personal device. Uh, if I'd signed in with a common area license or a rooms license, uh, we would have the conference phones or common area phones kicking in and we'd have the device listed in one of those categories. But for now, it shows up here. So couple things in here, you can see where we can edit the device, which we'll take a look at that in just a second. You can assign a configuration if you have set up configuration profiles in here. We can restart the device. We can update uh, update the device if it's pending. We can remove it if it's an older device and we, we don't want it showing up in here anymore. And we can manage our tags. Now we'll say edit. And uh, from the edit section, we can either, we can assign an organizational asset tag here and add notes. We can also give the device a new name, something a little more friendly than what we see up top if we want to. I'm not gonna do any of that now, but I just wanted to show you what's possible in here. Now, if I close that out, you know, again, the other things that are important to know as an IT admin that you may end up doing in here, assigning a configuration, if you're like putting certain configuration profiles together to manage things like lockout screens and all the other things that you can push with configuration profiles, that's an important task that may be done in here. The other common things are going to be to restart this device if it's in some sort of state that needs to be troubleshot or whatever the case is. And of course, updating the device if it's not updating on its own. We did see how you can update the device directly from the device earlier, but this gives you the opportunity to do that from the admin center as an admin. Now, if we click on the display name of the device, which right now the display name is my name because I'm signed into it. Uh, we'll get a little bit more here. We can get the versions of the Teams admin agent. We can see the firmware, though, is it's out of date. We actually have an available update here. So we'll go ahead and tell it to update that. I'm going to click on that right now and say update software. And we'll say manual update. Click on firmware and update. Now that'll queue and shortly the device will reboot with the firmware applied. We go over to details, we get a little bit more information about this uh, from a network perspective, MAC addresses, serial numbers. Coming over to our activity, we can see uh, my activity as a user where I have placed calls, 
Um, even though these aren't activities from the device, this is the user signed into the device. And then the history of actions that we've taken on the device. And right now, the only action we've taken is queuing up the software update. And there you have it, the Yealink CP965 conference phone certified for Microsoft Teams. Hope you found this device overview and demo incredibly useful. And if you did, I will kindly ask you once again, please like the video here on YouTube and then share it all over your social media networks. And don't forget to subscribe if you're not already because hey, how else are you gonna get notified the next time I come out with an awesome video like this one? Thanks again for watching and I hope we'll see you back here for the next device overview video.